In this video, I'm going to be doing a ranking of all 59 Walt Disney Studios animation films from least favorite to my favorite. I did a version of this video a couple of years ago where I ranked all 58 films when Frozen 2 came out, but it was done in sort of a lazy sort of montage style where I didn't really give much of an explanation or any explanation as to why they were in the order that they're in. But in this version, this 2021 version, I'm going to be giving a little bit of explanation for why they are in the order that they're in right here. Now, when I say Walt Disney Studios animation, I mean stuff specifically from Walt Disney Studios animation film, the official canon. So nothing from Pixar, no direct to DVD films just pure Walt Disney Studios animation films, all 59, including Raya the Last Dragon. So with that in mind, let's get started. Home on the Range from 2004. This is easily the worst film from Disney animation, and to me, it's not even close. This is the film that essentially killed 2D animation from Disney, and when you watch the movie, it's easy to see why. The main character, voiced by Roseanne Barr, really annoying, really unappealing, and just unlikable. The humor is pretty lackluster, and the movie doesn't have any charm to it. The animation style and visual style is just really kind of lazy and just kind of ugly for Disney. The villain plot is yawn-inducing. Just everything about this film make it Disney's all-time dud. Saludos Amigos from 1942. This is the first of Disney's package films of the 1940s. For those who don't know what that is, those are sort of films that were sort of stitched together stories as a result of budget reasons from World War II. But even by those standards, this movie is pretty lackluster. It's only 40 minutes, just some stitched together segments about Latin America culture. Uh, but unfortunately, the movie just really isn't all that inspiring when you watch it. Pretty lackluster effort, even given the excuse it had being a package feature. Make Mine Music from 1945. This was another package film from the 40s. This was kind of like Fantasia, where it was a bunch of musical segments sort of stitched together into one film. Unfortunately, these segments weren't nearly as entertaining as Fantasia. As a result, I was pretty bored while I was watching the movie. It failed to keep my interest. The segment at the end with the whale was actually okay-ish, but that wasn't nearly enough to save the movie. Chicken Little from 2005. This was Disney's first ever full CGI animated feature. And while this movie has a few moments where it's kind of entertaining, the movie unfortunately is too loud, too obnoxious, too schizophrenic, too all over the place, and just not as funny or as, or as clever as it thinks it's being. And the animation is really kind of rough, even by 2005 standards. Fantasia 2000 from 2000, although technically the movie debuted in 1999. This was a pretty poor and misguided attempt at trying to recreate the magic from the original Fantasia to where in this movie just the musical score and just the animation segments aren't nearly as good as the original, which is why this movie just doesn't work even though it's only like an hour's length. I thought really the first three or four segments in this movie were absolute trash, but I actually thought the final three, which was the flamingo one, the one with Donald and Daisy, and then the Firebird one, one were actually okay for what they were but that was hardly enough to save the movie melody time from 1948 this was the exact same kind of film that make my music was although i don't know i guess i just found the segments in this one to be more entertaining than make my music like that movie the best segment is at the end with the cowboy and the cowgirl though i think i only like that one just because that cowgirl was smoking hot other than that nothing hardly anything all that memorable or great or even good in this movie Dinosaur from 2000. Technically, this doesn't count as a full CGI animated film. In this movie, they actually used real life backgrounds and then put the dinosaurs into the movie. But even judging by 2000 standards, just the CGI and the renderings just doesn't look all that great into where the movie does look pretty visually ugly while you watch it. But besides that, the movie story just really isn't all that exciting. It's pretty boring. But I think the biggest problem is the characters. They were even more boring than the story. The meteor scene in this movie was pretty badass, but the movie just needed more of that kind of stuff to make it more entertaining. Three Caballeros from 1945, another package film. This one was a sequel to Saludos Amigos. Once the actual Three Caballeros part actually kicks in around the 30 minute mark, that song is legendary and it is fun. Some of the musical stuff they do in the movie is pretty good. Unfortunately, a lot of the movie is really just Donald lusting after Latin American women, where some of the visuals and some of the stuff they do is fun, but unfortunately it just goes on just a little too long for its own good. Fun and Fancy Free from 1947. Like the other package films, this one was kind of a mixed bag. I liked how they framed the story through the eyes of Jiminy, but the first segment, the one with the bears, wasn't all that great. It was pretty bland looking, boring for a lot of it, and was just kind of eh. 
The second story, the one with Mickey and the Beanstalk, was actually a pretty good segment telling the story of Jack and the Beanstalk with Mickey, Donald, and Goofy taking on Willy the Giant. It was arguably the best segment out of any of the package films. The Adventures of Ichabog and Mr. Toad from 1949. This was the final package film from the 40s, and when you look at it, it's probably the best produced package film from the 40s, where both segments are equally as well produced and as thought out. Uh, the Mr. Toad's story is pretty fun for what it is, and then the segment at the end, the story with Ichabog is solidish, but then it doesn't get really entertaining and crazy until the Headless Horseman comes in at the end. That segment was absolutely crazy and fun to watch. The Aristocats from 1970. This is the final movie Walt worked on before he died. That's why it's got a little bit of that Disney magic to it. The cats are cute and the villain plot is actually okay. Unfortunately, like a lot of movies during the Disney Dark Age, the movie just doesn't quite have enough energy about it to make it a super entertaining watch. A lot of points, it's pretty slow, which makes it a little boring at times. Robin Hood from 1973, for the most part a fun Disney spin on the Robin Hood stories, but unfortunately the really scratchy animation style combined with the tons of reused animation footage from other Disney movies make the movie feel really cheap compared to even other Dark Age Disney movies at the time. Winnie the Pooh from 2011. It's pretty crazy that this movie counts as an official Disney Animation Studios film, but since it does, the movie's harmless for the most part, it's pretty fun, and the animation is a beautiful 2D animation. But unfortunately, the movie is short and sweet to a fault, to where it's only like 50 minutes, and there's just not a whole lot of substance there, nor does it reach the sort of entertaining levels as the original 1977 classic. Meet the Robinsons from 2007. For the first two thirds of this movie, it was really just kind of all over the place. It was really sort of schizophrenic, really loud, really in your face, and the movie just thought it was a lot funnier than it actually was. But once the final third of the movie kicked in, the movie actually settled down a whole lot to where the story became a lot more focused. There was some actually some clever writing when it came to the story and the actual villain. And it actually had a really sort of heartwarming, feel good ending that really made me rank the movie a lot higher than those first two thirds of the movie really would have made me thought I would have ranked it. The Rescuers from 1977, sandwiched right in the middle of Disney's dark era. This movie is actually an, an all right adventure with some solid heroes in Bernard and Bianca and a pretty low key underrated Disney villain in Madame Medusa. Sadly, this movie is missing just enough of that Disney spirit and Disney charm to make it a memorable outing and one you'd want to consistently rewatch. The Great Mouse Detective from 1986, a solid movie and story about a kidnapping and the villain Professor Radigan was pretty good, but besides that, not a whole lot else that really stands out about the movie in a memorable way. Brother Bear from 2003, sandwiched right in the middle of Disney's experimental age, while this movie definitely isn't great, it's for the most part better than most people give it credit for, telling actually a pretty solid story of brotherhood that forms between two people, or bears in this case, it's got a really good soundtrack by Phil Collins, and actually a pretty good emotional twist that happens towards the end of the movie. Like I said, it's definitely not a great movie, but it's definitely also not a bad movie either. Lady and the Tramp from 1955. Obviously, the spaghetti scene is a classic great scene. For the most part, the romance is actually okay in the movie and the animation is as good as any Silver Age Disney movie. But unfortunately, this movie plays it really safe with the story to where it's just not very exciting or thrilling, which led to my emotions at the end of the movie being like, eh, it was okay. Pocahontas from 1995. I feel like this movie is really saved by the fact that those two standout songs, uh, Just Around the River Bend and Colors of the Wind, those really are great songs. And I feel like actually the first half of the movie was pretty solid. But once the actual love story kicks in between Pocahontas and John Smith, the movie goes absolutely downhill just because that romance is absolute cringe. It's probably the worst romance in any Disney animated movie. And that leads to the second half of the movie being pretty dull. And unfortunately, it's probably got one of the most boring Disney villains out of any of their movies in Governor Radcliffe to where he's doing everything that he's doing just so we can get some gold. Boring. 
The Sword and the Stone from 1963. This movie is really carried by Merlin to where him and also Archimedes were a pretty fun duo and they were fun to watch. And that battle at the end between Merlin and Matt and Mim was pretty badass and a really fun duel. But unfortunately, this movie shows how back then they just really did not care at all about story development or even character development to where when Arthur pulls out the sword, it's like, really, that's it? How did he even earn that? Yeah, it was hardly a well thought out story in this movie. Bolt from 2008, the final movie of Disney's experimental era actually ended up being a quality solid movie for the most part to where there was a fun premise about a dog that actually thought he was a superhero slash action hero. I like the camaraderie between the main trio in the movie. Sadly, the actual plot of the movie ended up being a generic pets finding their way home kind of film, but most of the movie still holds up pretty well still. Oliver and Company from 1988, the final movie of Disney's Dark Era. I actually think this movie has more things going for it than some of the other older Disney pet films like Lady the Tramp or The Aristocats. To where this movie has more energy going for it, the pacing's pretty good, the team of dogs, they were fun, they had some fun personalities, they even had some good musical numbers in there. And it has a pretty cool Disney death to where the dude just gets run over by a train. I mean, that's pretty badass for a Disney film. Frozen 2 from 2019. I like the idea or concept this movie went with, with what kind of story it was trying to tell. Whereas the first movie was really kind of like a girl's fairy tale kind of story. This movie was way more sort of like an epic quest journey kind of story. So I like that idea behind the story. But the actual plot of the movie I thought was pretty bad. I mean, this whole thing about magical mist that people have been stuck in for years. And then there's a bridge slash dam that has to be destroyed to be a symbol of peace. And then Elsa's the fifth element out of nowhere. And it's all like... Man, really? It took them six years to write this? I thought the actual plot of the movie was pretty bad, if you ask me. But the animation is still fantastic, the characters are still fun, and while the songs aren't as good as the first Frozen soundtrack, Elsa's second song, Show Yourself, almost makes the entire movie worth watching on its own. That was a beautiful song. The Black Cauldron from 1985. It is way overblown how dark of a Disney movie this is to where if you ask some Disney fans, they would say that this movie is unwatchable because of how dark it is for a Disney movie. And while it's not as light or whimsical as some of the other fairy tale stuff that Disney has done, the movie's got sort of enough fun light elements to be an enjoyable adventure to, to watch. And when it comes to the actual movie, I mean, I thought it was a fun, cool story about a boy and a girl looking for a cauldron, going up against the Horn King, some skeleton people, some witches. I mean, what else could you ask for in a fantasy adventure? I thought it was a cool, fun story. Uh, despite what some Disney fans would say, the movie doesn't deserve to be near the bottom of anyone's Disney list. The Rescuers Down Under from 1990, the second film of the Disney Renaissance and the first ever official sequel that Disney Animation Studios did. This was a very different film in tone compared to the first Rescuers, where that film was a lot more serious and darker in tone. This film was a lot more lighthearted and humorous, which led it, for the most part, being a pretty enjoyable adventure, despite not being the strongest story-wise. I thought the villain was pretty entertaining, and this film was revolutionary as it introduced a brand new computer-based coloring technique that we would see throughout the rest of the Disney Renaissance. Renaissance. Atlantis The Lost Empire from 2001. Between its animation style, characters, and narrative, this is one of the most un-Disney Disney films that they've done, but that's not such a bad thing in the grand scheme of things, because it makes for a really unique watching experience among the Disney animated canon. Watching this crazy narrative with these even crazy characters going on this amazing journey to a new land, and the actual animation and art behind Atlantis was amazing. Once they actually get to the land, it looks fantastic, and just sort of the artwork behind it looks great. What wasn't so great was the actual story development. Once you get to the second half, a lot of the story just feels rushed. Things start to happen with minimal explanation. The villain's pretty cliche, even though it leads to a pretty fun action-based third act at the end of the movie. The Jungle Book from 1967, the final movie that Walt Disney himself worked on before he died. Really fun characters in this movie. I mean, Kaz is one of my favorite Disney characters, period. He's really entertaining to watch him do his things. Even better songs in this movie. I mean, Bare Necessities and I Wanna Be Like You. Those are classic Disney songs for a reason. But in my opinion, the storytelling was pretty bad in this film, particularly in the second half to final third of the movie, to where they don't even try to make the narrative come together in any sort of like cohesive way. It led to the end of the movie being pretty meh for me, even though it is still pretty entertaining for the most part. 
Cinderella from 1950. Despite its shallow story, this is one of the best Disney movies to sort of personify that Disney magic when it comes to sort of its animation, its art style, its score, its songs, its protagonists, sort of the elegance behind the filmmaking. It's sort of Disney magic personified with its only downfall being the shallow story. The Fox and the Hound from 1981. I really enjoyed the mature message this movie told about friendship and growing up. It's one of the more mature messages that you would see in a Disney animated film. Because the movie's from the dark age, it's not as whimsical as some of Disney's other pet or animal movies, but that was appropriate for the story it was trying to tell. Treasure Planet from 2002. A pretty amazing adventure to watch unfold. Unlike Atlantis, this one had a bit more of that traditional Disney charm and tone, as well as having a really good cast of supporting characters and some amazing visual sequences like that spaceport scene or the supernova scene. Those looked fantastic. What really makes the movie, though, is the father figure relationship between Jim Hawkins and Long John Silver. I mean, that really was a great dynamic throughout the movie, as well as that I'm still here sequences. I mean, that was a great sequence that gives me uh, chills whenever I watch it. The Emperor's New Groove from 2000, a Disney animated film unlike any other, purely based on its humor and styles, just non-stop fun, it's probably a top three Disney animated film from a last perspective. Even though the writing's crazy, it's pretty spot on and all the jokes hit. Yzma and Kronk were a really fun villainous duo, and there's even a really good story of friendship between Kuska and Pacha to make it a nice, well-rounded movie. Bambi from 1942. From a visual perspective, I just love to watch this movie. The animation is just beautiful. It's that beautiful golden age Disney animation where it's just so fluid and such beauty to the eye. The movie's got an amazing all-time Disney dark moment with the scene involving Bambi's mom. That scene was just so well done and just such a gut punch when you watch it. The other thing that really stands out to me about this movie is the villain man. The way it's done, the way he's off screen and the visual score when you hear him, just fantastic. The narrative is pretty weird in this movie with how it does that time jump towards the end of the movie, but overall just the visual design, the animation uh, really makes the movie an uh, enjoyable watch and a visual treat to the eye, especially with that animation. Zootopia from 2016. While a CGI animated film about anthropomorphic animals isn't anything new or original, I mean that's what Chicken Little was, tying it in with themes about racism and equality was something new and something that you wouldn't see in any other uh, sort of animated kids film and it made for a really smart movie and a message that really holds up, especially right now, led by a great duo in Judy and Nick. The only thing that really sort of held the movie back or was sort of like the fatal flaw in the writing was this is one of the worst examples of the dreaded Disney twist villain and this is one of the worst examples where the villain is literally revealed in the final like five minutes and it's not even a cool twist, it's really sort of like a what really? It was the only hindrance in what was otherwise a really smart movie. Big Hero 6 from 2014. The movie's got the look, the story about heart and loss, the friendship, the laughs, some really cool Japanese anime style action, everything you would need in sort of a superhero film like this. Ralph Breaks the Internet from 2018. A lot of Disney fans dog on this movie, they don't like what they did, they thought it was a bad sequel. I've never seen it that way, I really like what this movie did as a sequel, telling a different kind of story from the original Wreck-It Ralph, sort of a, a fun story, but a story that had really kind of like mature themes about acceptance and having to move on, and for that reason I thought like, okay, that's a, made it sort of like a story that was worth telling, telling the next chapter in the friendship between Ralph and Vanellope, and I just really dug, dug that kind of like mature messaging. I really liked the new cast of characters they had, that was fun, and that princess scene is just legendary. I mean, it's so much fun, just such great writing with the stuff they did in that scene. Dumbo from 1941. One of the shortest Disney movies clocking in at around an hour's length, but that's not a bad thing because the movie did exactly what it needed to do with the story, telling a great underdog story with its share of sad moments, its fun moments like the pink elephant scene, and even some good old fashioned classic 1940s cartoon racism.
Alice in Wonderland from 1951. Despite not having the strongest narrative, this is the movie that did exactly what an Alice in Wonderland movie needed to do, which was just have that feeling of madness throughout the movie. You know, from its crazy characters to its sort of like cartoonish gimmicks, it's just that overall feeling of madness and craziness to where it's just a really entertaining watch, but you really do feel bad for Alice though, because every time she goes to one of these characters just to get some help, she ends up getting just screwed over just because of the crazy world that she's in. But all of her encounters with all the characters throughout the movie is pretty entertaining and it makes for a really fun watch. Hercules from 1997 Directed by the legendary duo of Ron Clements and John Musker, while not quite as good, this movie followed a lot of the same formula that made Aladdin successful with its classic great underdog story, its comedic tone and supporting characters, its sexy female lead, some amazing visual sequences like the Hydra fight, and just a great villain, super entertaining villain in Hades. I mean, he was just a great villain in almost all aspects. The Many Adventures of Winnie the Pooh from 1977, a series of stories sort of put together into one overall narrative. This is easily the best movie from Disney's Dark Age because it has that Disney charm and charisma the most. It's really enjoyable and it's the reason why Pooh and friends have had so many adventures since this movie's release. The Princess and the Frog from 2009. This was Disney's sort of big comeback after the mixed bag that was their experimental phase. Where this movie was essentially a Disney Renaissance movie because it had the winning formula that made a lot of the Disney Renaissance movies successful, but it also brought its own sort of good stuff to the table with its amazing New Orleans setting, its great jazz inspired music, a super entertaining villain in Dr. Fessler, and finally being a Disney animated movie to represent African Americans. Sleeping Beauty from 1959. Like other pre-Renaissance princess movies, the story is sort of on the shallow side with this one. And the actual character development for Sleeping Beauty herself, Aurora, not so great, but it's made up for by incredible artistry throughout this movie. I mean, the medieval Renaissance style animation they have throughout the movie looks amazing. And the movie's got sort of great whimsical charm throughout it. And Maleficent was definitely one iconic bad bitch of a villain. Frozen from 2013, the phenomenon that just grabbed the world by storm for two reasons, really main reasons that I see. One, the amazing story of sisterhood, that's something that wasn't really seen in any other Disney animated movie. And two, the soundtrack. The soundtrack was top notch. It's probably a top five soundtrack all time for a Disney movie. I mean, the soundtrack is so good, people still just can't let it go. And uh, even though I'm not really a big fan of Disney twist villains, I thought this one actually pulled it off pretty solidly to where it actually added to the story. Tangled from 2010. Tangled is the most important Disney movie of the modern era. It's the one that established the winning formula for this new wave of CGI Disney films, which is why we're in sort of the new Disney revival era that we're in and we get films like Frozen and Moana. All of them are possible because of Tangled and how good it was. You know, it respected the Disney movies of the past, but it also had its own flavor and spunk, which is why it's the beloved modern day classic that it is. Raya and the Last Dragon from 2021. The movie was the ultimate combination of Moana and The Legend of Korra, where they really took the best elements from both properties to make a really fun, fresh, and exciting Disney adventure. They really have the new, new age Disney princess thing down to a science, where Raya, she was just another kick-ass Disney female protagonist, and she was really fun to follow. The settings in the movie were amazing, and just this world they built was so cool to explore. The movie had some great action also, and the movie actually had some pretty deep character introspe introspectives that strayed the movie away from a standard black and white good guy bad guy story with how deep it got at times so that was good also the only thing i could sort of criticize the movie for is that the fact that they really did follow the formula of moana to a t you know everything down to the whole journey to find a stone there's the daughter father relationships there's the whole godlike shape-shifting disney ally with maui and Sisu, but the movie still had enough great stuff on its own to be its own standout for Disney in a movie I really enjoyed. The Hunchback of Notre Dame from 1996. This movie is just deliciously twisted with its themes and character dynamics. I mean, it's a lot more sophisticated than pretty much any other Disney animated movie. I mean, your main villain Frollo, he's just flat out lusting over Esmeralda. That's why he wants her. I mean, how much more twisted can you get for a Disney villain? You can't, that's the answer. 
and the movie just had a whole lot of sequences that just made me say whoa like the festival of fool scene with esmeralda's dance and then the scene where quasimodo is saving esmeralda from the stake and that battle at the cathedral a whole lot of whoa moments that really made this movie pop and no i didn't hate the gargoyles either i thought they were okay 101 Dalmatians from 1961. This is definitely the best among all the other Disney pet movies. This movie's just got great character design and style. The story is thrilling and keeps your interest. And it's all helped along by the devil herself, Cruella, who is definitely one of those villains that really elevates the film that they're in. Tarzan from 1999. The final film of the Disney Renaissance was an amazing movie experience. Among all the other 2D animated Disney films, it's among the top just in terms of pure animation and look. The action sequences collectively are probably the best of any Disney animated film. And the soundtrack done by Phil Collins just took the movie to another level. It made every scene that it was in an 11 out of 10. Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs from 1937. This is the Disney movie that started it all, their first one. It set the template for what Disney films are known for with adorable protagonists and Snow White, bad bitches and villains with the evil queen, just that general Disney charm and humor throughout it. Had that beautiful golden age Disney animation that just made the artistry just beautiful in this movie. And a lot of dark and effed up moments that defined a lot of those golden age Disney films. Yeah, some of the stuff is a little dated, like just the overall sort of story pacing and just momentum in the movie but you'd have a serious stick up your butt if you can't really admire what this movie brought to the table fantasia from 1940 obviously not a traditional movie in terms of story and whatnot but an absolute masterpiece in terms of its audio and visual artistry to where this movie was just an absolute masterpiece perfect storm in terms of combining that beautiful golden age disney animation combined with just an amazing musical score to where this movie is just nothing no disney movie will ever be able to top this one from an artistry perspective <laughs> The Little Mermaid from 1989. In my opinion, this is among the top five or top three in terms of overall importance to Disney. It set the template for the Disney Renaissance. It set a new standard in terms of princesses to where Ariel is still one of their most beloved characters and she's the one that gives the movie sort of its spunk and its life. In my opinion, this is number one in terms of overall music in a Disney film. All four of the main songs are A pluses. And the movie has another bad bitch of a villain, Ursula, to where not only was she mean and a great villain, but she was just nasty. I mean, every one of the scenes she was in, she did something that was just like, ugh. But yeah, overall, just a great movie. Mulan from 1998. Obviously, this movie gets well-deserved praise for being a different kind of Disney story, a unique story, and setting up new expectations for princesses with Mulan herself, which led to characters like Moana and Raya. But the movie was still great in terms of those other classic Disney elements to where the music and the soundtrack were still great. The movie was really funny. I mean, some of those situations Mulan got into at the camp were really goddamn hilarious. The avalanche scene is among the best visual sequences of any Disney movie, 2D or 3D. And Mushu was definitely one of the best Disney sidekicks. Had the movie had a stronger villain, it could have elevated in terms of being a top five Disney movie. But as it is, it's still one of the best Disney movies. Lilo and Stitch from 2002, a Disney movie with some real edge and attitude about it, but enough of those sad and heartwarming moments to make you go, damn, you know, I feel bad for that little blue guy. That and the Hawaiian setting, the Elvis soundtrack, those family moments, and Stitch just being awesome made this a standout for Disney. Moana from 2016. I really enjoyed Moana when I saw it in the theaters. I thought it was a great movie, but it was those times watching it at home on Blu-ray afterwards that I realized, wow. This is just one of the best things Disney Animation has done, period. I mean, they really took the whole next-gen princess thing to the next level with Moana, who's such a great protagonist, and they said, screw trying to tell any kind of traditional princess love story. We're just going to tell sort of an amazing adventure that gave you something of everything. You know, it gave you thrilling action sequences, beautiful settings, amazing songs. Like, yeah, it was just an amazing movie. The only thing that was disappointing is that it continued to trend Disney has these days with not having a central villain, but thankfully it did still have actual sort of obstacles in the movie, like the Kakamora and Tomatoa, who, like I said, has one of the best Disney villain songs ever. I mean, that was just an amazing sequence. Wreck-It Ralph from 2012. This movie was essentially the video game version of my all-time favorite movie, Who Framed Roger Rabbit. I mean, it showcased an amazing new world with cameos from other properties to bring it to life. Had a great original story with fun characters to follow. Had a great villain twist at the end. 
all the elements added together to be my favorite modern day Disney movie. Pinocchio from 1940. The showcase early Disney at its best where on the surface it was an adorable sweet story about a puppet come to life but it was really sort of a dark and twisted story with the different directions it goes in dealing with Pinocchio getting captured, getting swallowed by a whale, there's the coachman who's one of the most effed up Disney villains ever, probably the most effed up and then there's the donkey scene which is terrifying. It was just a really well crafted movie in the golden age at its best. Beauty and the Beast, 1991. From a pure quality standpoint, this is probably the best Disney movie. I mean, it's got just this next level of filmmaking about it to where it has probably the best developed romance out of any Disney movie between Belle and the Beast. It was just really well done. And just all the stuff around the movie with the songs, the score, the great side characters, subverting expectations for a Disney villain. Uh, it was a movie that's just deserving of all the acclaim it gets as being Disney's best film. Peter Pan from 1953, one of the movies that best exemplifies Disney magic because it just throws Disney magic at you to where you just can't help but enjoy yourself. I mean, is there a more magical Disney sequence than that you can fly sequence? I mean, that sequence is just amazing. But the humor in the movie, I mean, it was just really funny with those sequences with Captain Hook getting effed by the crocodile. I mean, those scenes were really hilarious with the physical humor that they did. And Tinkerbell, she had a fun character arc with her being a jealous bitch at Wendy and effing with her. And just by the end of the movie, it's hard not to just smile and feel like a kid at what just an amazing sort of magical fun journey that it was. The Lion King from 1994. No Disney movie is more epic than The Lion King. I mean, it's just such an amazingly epic story, fueled by Scar, who was the best Disney villain because of the mental damage he did to Simba. So he's the best Disney villain. The movie's got arguably the best Disney sidekicks in Timon and Pumbaa. They were a hilarious duo. It's got a top three Disney visual sequence with the stampede chase. That was really well done. It's got one of my favorite Disney scenes ever with the scene that Rafiki gives the pep talk to Simba. I mean, that was just a beautifully done scene. And it's got a top two Disney soundtrack out of any Disney animated film. All of that stuff to go with its epic story. Aladdin from 1992. Out of all the Disney animated movies, there's no movie that I find myself revisiting more, praising more, and enjoying more than Aladdin. I mean, it just had all the elements just to be a perfect, enjoyable movie for me. I mean, it was a great underdog story, and a, a romance that was not shallow, and it was well done. It had a vibrant animation style, a great supporting cast of characters, notably the best ever Disney villain henchman with Iago. I mean, he's just one of my favorite Disney characters, period. He's just a really fun character. A plus songs. And the movie just had a ton of laughs. I mean, I remember the first time I saw this movie, and I was just laughing my ass off. Of course, highlighted by Robin Williams as the genie, which his voice work was just revolutionary for how animated characters were done. I mean, it was just such a great performance. All those elements together made it my favorite Disney animated movie. So there you go with my ranking for all 59 Disney animated films. This was quite the video to do, but it was a very fun and enjoyable video to do for me just because I love Disney. I love their rich history. I love that all of their films, there's so many different distinguished eras of filmmaking that they've had. And I love the fact that they've made so many enjoyable movie experiences. So that'll do it for this video. If you made it to the end, thank you for watching.